Welcome to JWL Sports, where we review all the best sports clips from around the world. If this is your first time checking out a video, please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. Without further ado, let's get to it. We're watching a clip of The Herd with Colin Cowherd um, talking about the Denver Nuggets and Nikola Jokic. Um, about are they really just the beginning of this dynasty run, right? Like, are they just by and far just, you know far and away the best team in the NBA and just in a way where other teams, it doesn't seem like they're going to be able to catch up anytime soon. Not unlike what happened when, you know, the Lakers back in the, you know, Kobe and Shaq and obviously more recently with the Golden State Warriors of just like once this was like formed, it was like, oh my God, it's going to take an army to stop them. I'm not going to make that statement just yet. I'm really curious to see what Colin has to say. So let's just jump in right into it and we can break it down from there. Even though the Niners and the Chiefs ended up in the Super Bowl, it was a little bit of a surprise. I mean, the Chiefs only averaged 22 points a game this year. They scuffed it offensively, middle of the pack. Baltimore, I thought, was much better all year long. Miami, Buffalo, a couple of the very dangerous teams. Uh, San Francisco, I didn't really see Brock Purdy hoisting a trophy. Philadelphia started on fire. I bought into the Cowboys hype for a few weeks. Not but in the fault. NBA, Denver's going to win, barring an injury, back-to-back -back titles. Jokic yesterday, 32 points, 16 rebounds, and get this, 16 assists. <laughs> that would have been a great night for Magic Johnson. The Warriors had been red hot, got a couple of young players playing well, their rotation working fine, they were at home, they got up to a great start, and lost to this Denver team for the ninth time in 10 tries. They can't solve them. They don't match up with them. And the Warriors 2022 won the championship. But Jokic is different. This Denver team, they're the Spurs with Tim Duncan. Perfectly built roster. Get ready for a dynasty. It's not going to be Shaq Kobe dynasty. It's not going to have the drama of the Michael Jordan dynasty or the Heedle dynasty. And we've had some fun ones. But Jokic is the best player in the league without question. Jokic and Murray are the best combo. They have the best starting five, plus, minus. Only Boston is close. And Aaron Gordon's length defensively, and Michael Porter can be streaky, but he's gifted offensively. Add in a very well-coached team with just enough depth. They're winning the title. And I, I don't, I, unless, barring an injury, Celtics are the only starting five that's even close. And this Denver team is actually built for the postseason more than the regular season. Why? Because in the postseason, you shrink your rotation. So it'll be perfect. You'll get about three guys off the bench. C Christian Brown's one of the guys will come off the bench. Reggie Jackson will give you a few points off the bench. But we talk so much about mobility, and I'm guilty of this. I spend so much time in the NBA talking about a collection of all-stars and mobility, and this team has one all-star in 10 years. It's Jokic. Jamal Murray in the crowded West with all those great guards never made an all-star team. They're high IQ, huge, just enough depth, can be great defensively in spots with a bunch of shooters. And again, they're really built for the playoffs. Right now, they're a number three seed. I wouldn't take anything from that. When the Bucs won a title, they were a three seed. Uh, the uh, Warriors have won a title as a three seed. The Spurs during Duncan's era weren't always a number one seed. And they actually, right now, Denver's got a higher winning percentage than they had last year. So this team is stocked. They are perfectly constructed. Just two or three guys off the bench. Once you get to the playoffs, it's an eight-man rotation. You're not playing the ninth and the tenth guy. Um, and I think the West is better than the East. I don't buy Milwaukee right now. Knicks need another star. They didn't get one at the trade deadline. It's a limited team offensively. You saw it again this weekend against Boston. They just have limitations. Boston can make things a little uncomfortable, but the Lakers... They don't have a Jokic. They don't, they don't have the shooting. Uh, Phoenix, I'm not sure they could figure out how to stop Jokic either. Golden State just doesn't match up with them. Uh, this team is really special. And, and again, don't be fooled by the number three seed. It's Tim's Duncan Spurs. That doesn't necessarily, unlike the NFL where the Chiefs are great for ratings, Taylor Swift, Mahomes, Andy Reid, very clever, Midwest. I don't think this is much of a ratings grab, though I enjoyed watching them, watched the entire game yesterday. But um, get ready for a dynasty, because that's what it looks like. So, okay, there's a few things that I want to say about this, because sometimes you have a dynasty, it's because the other team 
is just so dominant, right? Like we were, like I just already mentioned before, um, with the Lakers and the Warriors, uh, the Bulls, um, and also even the uh, uh, the Miami Heat, even though they only ended up winning what two out of four, um, but still dynastic, you know, from my viewpoint at least. Um, but to me, the Nuggets are in the position to keep winning less so because they're so dominant because they're so amazing Jokic is great I love Murray like I I I love I like this team a lot I love this team a lot like I have like no issues against them one bit but it's also perfect timing okay because Steph is older LeBron is older Kevin Durant is older uh, Minnesota has this like weird mix of like young and old um, where they still have some young guys like, you know, like, you know, Ant is still like coming into who he's supposed to hopefully one day become and Cat is like kind of like, you know, I don't want to say he's near the end, but he's just he's been a very unique, you know, player. Um, and then on the other side, you have uh, like like he pointed out, you know, the Knicks are just kind of not fully complete the celtics are also a pretty big question mark because i, I think the, the celtics are like i don't know what can they do the sixers and beat is down um cavaliers i mean they don't scare me one bit and then as well as Giannis and dame like dame five years ago with Giannis, absolutely deadly but and it's not to say that dame is old or past his prime but it's just different it's just it's just different age and basketball is so fascinating because you play you can play for so many years right you you can be you can have players that have been in the league you who, who are like 34 35 and playing with like 22 year olds okay even younger and so and that really matters and that is why lebron especially you know in mid to late of his career he was like get these young guys out of here you know give me vets 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 um, and then even the Warriors were like, get Jordan Poole out of here. Um, and, it, and it really matters. Development is so different. It's not like in football where you maybe get a, a great wide receiver. And a lot of times that wide receiver and especially running back, you know, right? If you have a great you know, up and coming wide receiver or running back, um, you put him with Patrick Mahomes, who's in his prime right now. Boom. You will have like immediate success. Um, there could be some growing pains, of course, like undeniably. Um, but... I'm talking about, about people who are like great elite, you know, um, from the jump. And again, it doesn't mean that they're not going to continue to get better, but you can have success very, very, very quickly. It doesn't take three, four, five years to like get this going. In basketball, it can, and it often does. And we forget that, you know, that there's a reason why all these greats, LeBron James, Steph Curry, Michael Jordan, um, Shaq, you know, like it took them years of development. Like it, 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 these players really need to bake and develop, you know, and, and of course you have some of these rare moments, like kind of like a Jordan or um, a LeBron hitting the ground running, but it's different. They were good individually, but they weren't able to win. If you just put LeBron James immediately with that Miami heat team, like from day one, when he was 19, um, I don't know if they, I don't think they win, honestly. I really, I mean, like, I don't think they do because um he needed to be better than he was when he was 19 in order to win with Miami Heat and they only won two so maybe they could eke out one especially if Dwayne Wade was like more in his prime but that's also the thing if Dwayne Wade was like five years younger three four years younger with LeBron and they were closer to each other's you know age and primes the Miami Heat would be even better um and so again like the age the age thing is such a fascinating aspect in basketball because people age so differently in terms of what goes sometimes they can't keep up the pace of the game but they are still elite shooters sometimes their their legs give out like we're seeing with clay like he his shot has kind of gotten away from him and a lot of times people say the shot is the last thing to go for me that's why people say like steph curry can be shooting until he's 40 that's why ray allen was still you know um important but then some of these other bigger guys like you know like who thinks joel Embiid is going to age great you think joel Embiid's going to still be playing basketball when he's 38 39 40 like i don't know about that one so it's just it's just such a, a difficult um thing to always try to line all these players up i'm seeing this with philly with tyrese maxi and um joel Embiid. tyrese maxi 
needs a couple years to really ascend into the true all-star that he is. You know, he just became an all-star this uh, this past, you know, this season for the first time, I believe. And it's just like, he's just a lot younger in his development relative to Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid, in order to really succeed with Tyrese Maxey, needs Tyrese Maxey's like, needs him to be like two years, two, three years ahead of where he's at. Then you're like, boom, let's go. Or have Joel Embiid go back, you know, in time of two, three years. And so this, the whole reason why I'm really saying this is just because a lot of these teams are in disarray in that regard. There's a lot of this mismatching. Um, again, um, Luca with Kyrie, um, you know, Kyrie's older, Kevin Durant older, who's with Booker, who's younger. It's just, they're not matching up perfectly. Um, and which is what's making it perfect for Jokic and, and the Nuggets and Murray and, and all the other people um that are on that team that make that team legit that they have this good mix as well as they've been through their growing pains they went through the playoffs they've lost they've had other players go down and injuries and face that adversity you know like they faced those moments so now they actually are iron tested they have the pedigree so if they are going up against the the timberwolves in a tough series like the nuggets have truly been there they really know what's up who where in terms like the timberwolves don't even against the Celtics, if they go into the NBA Finals, the Celtics have had obviously had a lot of success. They haven't won, but that's the difference. Like, the, you know, the Nuggets know we are here. We've done this. We can win. We probably have now a two-time MVP in, in Jokic. Like, let's go. Um, Murray has come up big, especially in the last playoffs. But, that's, but I don't want to say, though, that we can just rip off these wins because make no mistake about it, the Nuggets could have lost there was a key injury against the Timberwolves last season. Um, mainly, I forget the guy's name, but right, he like punched a wall or whatever um, and like broke his hand. Um, and they struggled at time at times against the Timberwolves. I'm not going to say that it was like, you know, fully possible, but like it would have been a significantly closer se- uh, series. Uh, the Lakers, I think it was the Lakers series, if memory serves me correctly, where Murray really had to get hot, like in multiple games. It was like multiple fourth quarters. The dude is putting is having like twenty point quarters, or like literally making like five threes in a row, or just shooting a hundred percent. You know, missing only like one shot in the fourth. Like big, big moments. Now you could make the argument that that's what the Warriors needed when they won, right? Clay needed to rip go off, and you know, in the third quarter or the fourth quarter, and Steph needed to make you know four threes in the fourth quarter. You know, go four for four. Like you can always kind of make that argument. But it shows the fragility um, in a lot of those games. But it often gets balanced out when you're playing seven-game series, right? That's kind of the benefit of a seven-game series in basketball is that more often than not, the better team wins because there's just more games to establish who's the better team. Um, And I think that's where Denver gets to shine because, right, the whole thing is, is like, can you beat this team four times? And since they are battle-tested, their their leaders of their teams are in their prime and young enough not only in their prime but they're also in like their phys- in like their physical health prime in terms of like you know they're not recovering from all these bad injuries um they're not um being worn down by the season right Joel Embiid gets worn down from the season Jokic doesn't necessarily do that um Kyrie is always getting injured and banged up Murray is not necessarily I know Murray has had his injury history but things have changed it seems um as well as the Warriors, right? The Warriors leader is Steph Curry. He's younger. I mean, he's old now. You know, he just is. And so he can't, it's just these difficult series. He puts up 50 in a game. That next game, he's just spent. Same thing with LeBron James. LeBron James goes into a, an overtime game or takes a series to six or seven games. That next series, he's already fried. AD is, can't even play back to back. So, you know, he's always hanging on by a thread. AD has a big first half. He disappears in the second half, you know, because he doesn't have the stamina and the resilience and again it's it's no fault of these players you right like i don't blame these players it's not that they're just lack of conditioning it's a combination between genetics bad luck and um uh age that's just what it is so to me really the ultimate point and i'll just leave it at this is is just really that what makes denver in this unique position to potentially win another two or so is that the other teams around them are just have the are just constructed very uniquely where it's just a mix of too old, your best players are too old, or the other players are just too young, and they're just not there yet. They're not ready to really be like, let's go, we got this. 
you know that's why a lot of these champions don't win until they're 26 27 28 29 30 right like it's it's a lot older you're not really seeing a lot of these you know uh, leaders of the team going in and being 23 years old 24 years old and hoisting up the trophy you know it just doesn't really happen um so to me that's why uh the nuggets are potentially in the best situation but doesn't mean that that can't change overnight. It's just a little different because, again, in football, you draft a Patrick Mahomes or you draft a A.J. Brown or a Zeke even at the time. Like, that can change immediately. It changes your team immediately. The Lakers, they can't go to the draft and draft someone who now immediately makes them able to battle up against the Denver Nuggets, right? They got to make a play. They got to get another big player right they got to be like can we get kevin durant can we get you know steph curry right I'm, I'm making things up but it's like it's just different and then by doing that you also now disarm another team right you disarm another team where if you build in the draft you don't but in basketball it just takes too long to build on the draft it's got to bake the warriors baked for years before they became the warriors and the nuggets baked for years before they became the nuggets and now the celtics are baking and it's like are they the celtics i mean they've been very consistent very competitive We've seen them lose in years past, but again, what are we talking about? We're blaming, you know, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown for not winning the NBA finals when they were like 23 years old. Like again, if LeBron James didn't do it, Michael Jordan didn't do it. Why are we expecting them to do it? That's just the way I see it. Please let me know your comments below. I read every single comment so if you think what i'm saying is the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard please let me know in the comments below if you think what i'm saying is the most amazing thing then definitely please let me know either way let's get into some discussions let's get into some fights but ultimately let's just have some fun and please do consider subscribing we are building an amazing community here and i would absolutely love to see you part of it i want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to something we're really excited to be part of and i think we're well on our way to doing it and please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really really does help with the visibility and the algorithm and I would be greatly appreciative. Thank you so much and see you next time.